Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1376. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Wow, we got a crazy formula here and a crazy data set. Here's our data set. We have the item number. And notice we have a lookup table over here. So item number K123 is an ORCID. H322 is a row. So that's the item column. But then we have these sub items. And our goal is to create a description. And this is what the description should look like, which means I need a formula here to copy down. And I need it to look up this item, return orchard. But somehow the formula is also going to have to count the sub items. So down here, of course, there's two of these, and that represents rows. So it should be two in rows. Down here, six in daisy. Now, here is the formula I did. That is a crazy long formula that follows some logic. But then, of course, our teammate Bill Sizzes had a much shorter formula that follows a completely different logic. Now, Part of the essence of what Bill Sizz's formula is going to do is notice I highlighted this bold. If we could get four in orchard right in that row, and then down here, two in rows and six in daisy, we could actually do something like this. That means in this column right here, the formula would deliver the count in whatever the lookup value is. And then as we copy the formula down, we could, in the remaining three cells for Orchard, we could do a formula that says, hey, please always look one above. So in essence, we're going to do the heavy lifting in this row. And then down below, we'll simply have a simple formula element that looks one above. That means this. We're going to have to have in the formula a formula. And it will be an if. We're going to have two ifs to deliver three different things. Here we're going to deliver nothing. Here we're going to deliver the heavy lifting formula to calculate. And here we'll simply have a formula element that looks one above. So the logic will be the same all the way down. Empty, heavy lifting formula, one above, one above. All right, now the first part is going to be pretty easy. And we'll start right off to the side. I'm just going to do the in and the orchid equals. And we need in inside our formula. So we have to put it in double quotes, space in and double quotes. And then we're going to join it to a simple VLOOKUP. Now notice this is the heavy lifting row. So it's always going to look exactly that many over and one above. That's the lookup value, comma, the lookup table. There it is. First column has the thing we're matching. Second column has the thing we're going to retrieve and bring back to the cell. I need to hit F4 to lock it, comma. Two has the thing we need, so we type column mid next to comma. That first column in the lookup table is not necessarily sorted. So we put false for exact match or 0, which represents false, which means exact match. Close parentheses, Control-Enter, copy this down. Now I'm also going to copy this one up. All right, that gives us an idea that this is the only row that's going to have the heavy lifting, the part that creates the description. We'll come back to this copy and paste it into our formula later. Because now what do we need? We need to somehow work on how to get the 4, the 2, and the 6. All right, you ready? What if I had a formula that had a shrinking range as I copy down, or also known as a contracting range? I'm going to hit the F4 key after highlighting the last cell reference. That means the bottom cell reference is locked, but not the top. As I copy down, and for the time being, it will look ridiculous. But as I copy down, watch, there's the full column. But here, oh, that range is shrinking. Now, in the row that's going to do the heavy lifting to create this, if I ask the question of that range, where is the first text item? It would look through and say, well, positionally, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down here in this cell for our next 
heavy lifting row. If I ask the question, where is the first text item in this range, it would count 1, 2, 3. Well, if we could get a 3 right here and a 5 right here, we'd simply subtract 1 and get our 4 and our 2. So you ready? Up at the top, F2. I'm going to type, after the equal sign, the match function. Now, the match function is a lookup function that can look through a list and tell you the relative position of an item in a list. So if we're trying to find the relative position of the first text item, that's the perfect function. Now, I want a lookup value that will look up any text that's exactly one or more characters. So in double quotes, I'm going to use the wild card question mark. That means one character, any character at all. And then asterisk, that's another type of wild card that means zero or more characters. In double quotes, comma. What that formula element means is please always look for any text that's one or more characters. And of course, that will find any one of these that are one or more characters. Now we come to the end comma, and very importantly, we want exact match 0 because we actually have duplicates. When we ask the question, find any text items, well, there's three of them, right? And we always want to find the first one. So by using exact match, when there's duplicates, that tells match to only find the first one. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. You can see the 5 and the 3. Up at the top, I have the active cell, and the remaining column is highlighted. So I hit F2, and I'm going to edit the formula in the active cell minus 1 at the end. And I'm going to use Control Enter to populate the edited formula down through the column. And there we have a 4 and a 2. But wait a second, what about down here? Well, if I hit F2, we're definitely going to have to search for that error. But notice, there's that contracting, shrinking range. What if I just said how many rows are in that when there's an error? So up at the top in the top cell, F2, I'm going to use if error. So if error will run the match every time it'll run it. And if there's no error, it'll just dump the number. But as soon as it gets to that error, I come to the end, comma, value if error. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to click inside match, click on lookup array, control C to copy that range. And then in value if error, please give me the rows, control V, close parentheses. What does rows do? Well, it simply looks through a range and tells you how many rows there are. When we get down to this last cell right here, of course, it will report 6. All right, you ready? Close parentheses on the if error. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And there's our 4, our 2, and our 6. Now I'm going to come up, and we simply need to attach to this at the end our in and look up. So I highlight in edit mode, control C, escape, click on that cell, F2, the cursor's at the end, ampersand, the join symbol, control V, control enter, double click and send it down. And there's that heavy lifting formula. There it is right there. Every single row that has the first sub item, we have our heavy lifting formula. Now remember we mentioned earlier we need three different things in this column. I need to show nothing here. I need to run the heavy lifting. But if these were not here, what I really want is equals one above. No problem. We can do that. Now I'm going to Control Z. If we have show nothing, heavy lifting, and one cell above. That means three possible things can go into any one cell. Anytime we have that, we can use two if functions. Now, let's start off by showing nothing in the cell that has the lookup item. So in the top cell, I'm going to hit F2. And right after the equal sign, I'm going to put our first if function. Now, our first logical test is going to be based on the item column. Now, notice the pattern here is contain something, empty, empty, empty. 
So our logical test is going to be, hey, relative cell reference, 2 to my left, are you empty, comma. Now notice I use, is that cell equal to double quote, double quote? Well, double quote, double quote has a few meanings in Excel, but one of them allows us to check if a cell is empty. So here we're going to get false because that cell is not empty. Here we'll get true, true, and so on. That means the value of true is going to be our formula. And because this will come out false for this record, I'm going to come to the end and comma. The value of false is going to be double quote, double quote, close parentheses. Now notice, value of false, we're using double quote, double quote, which is a zero length text string. We're using it to display nothing in the cell, whereas over here, we were using it to check whether a cell was empty. Both uses are allowed. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And now our formula is almost there. We have our empty cell whenever there's something in the item column. And first sub item, there's our heavy lifting formula. The only last part to the formula is how do we get these cells to always look one cell above? Well, let's click in this cell right here. And by the way, that NA is coming from the VLOOKUP. It's trying to look up an item that's not in the first column of the table. But for our formula, we need to show one cell above here. So let's think about this. If we add a second IF here, that means we'd already have, is this equal to empty, true. And if we added a second IF and asked, is the cell directly above not equal to empty or not equal to double quote, double quote, that would give us our second true. Now I'm even going to build the formula right here, F2. And very carefully, after the first logical test, and you can see I clicked in the wrong place, I want to click right after that first comma. And the value of true, we're going to add a second if. So if. And I'm going to ask the question, is the cell directly above me not equal to double quote, double quote? Now, not is less than, greater than together, and then double quote, double quote, comma. So now, anytime you have two ifs in succession, that means an AND logical test. So is this equal to empty cell? True. Is this not equal to empty cell or a zero length text string? True. So what do we want for our value of true? One cell above. Otherwise, comma, the value of false. That will be our heavy lifting formula. Now, we want to be careful here. We just inserted an if. There is the value of false we want. So I'm going to highlight it so I can tell where I am in the formula. And very carefully come to the end. And the screen tips always help us. I'm going to type a close parentheses. And now the screen tip changed. If I select value of true, that's that whole second if. Finally, we have the value of false, double quote, double quote, from the first if. Now, let's Control Enter, double click and send it down. Select that cell and copy it up. And you got to be kidding. That one formula is working all the way down. Now, let's prove to ourselves that the logic is working. We have one, two, three. Even though these two look the same, the actual formula elements in the cell are quite different. This has the entire if error match rows v lookup, whereas this one simply has that single cell. Remember, the ifs run logical tests and dump things into the cell. So in this cell right here, it ran these two and simply ran one cell above. Now let's click in the cell, and I want to run through the logic going up to formulas, over to formula auditing, and evaluate formula. Or we can use the keyboard Alt-M-V. Here's our evaluate formula dialog box. There's our formula. And there's the Evaluate button. Now notice the underline means that's the part of the formula we're about to evaluate. And you can click Evaluate or hit Enter. So we'll run our first logical test. 
enter, enter. It comes out false because, of course, it asks, are you equal to nothing? And it came out false, which means for the first if, we have to come all the way to the end. And it's that double quote, double quote that gets dumped into the cell. So everything's underlined when I hit Enter. That's the result. Now I'm going to click Escape. Let's go to the second cell, Alt-M-V. Now it's going to run for the second record. It's going to ask the question, are you equal to nothing? And is this not equal to double quote, double quote? So when I click Evaluate or Enter, the first logical test, of course, comes out true. But look at the second one, Enter, Enter. It comes out false, because when you ask, are you not equal to double quote, double quote, that, in fact, is false. Now, that means for the second if, there it is. The inner part's going to get evaluated. So as I evaluate through this formula, each part. And finally, that's what that heavy lifting formula evaluates to, sitting in the value of true false of the second if. So when I hit Enter, 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 there it is. Now we come down to the third cell, Alt-M-V. It's going to run the test. Enter, enter. For this row, it is empty in the item column. Enter, enter. And look at that. It's true because for that cell, that is not equal to double quote, double quote. So now it's actually the C7 right there that's going to get dumped into the cell. Enter, and you can see explicitly that's what's going to be in the cell. Enter, it's looking one above. Escape. All right, I love hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Michael Diamond for the question, and thanks to Bill Sizzes for this amazing formula. We'll see you next video.